ETP fans, Thomas here, doing a bat rep. I'm um, doing it with Jeremy. Jeremy, hey. wave at the camera, yeah, all that. And this is uh, Beard Man. He'll be here to comment and, uh, and watch us play. Um, Jeremy's gonna play Eldar, we're playing 2,000 points. Tell me what you got in this list here. This is your stuff, right? Yes, yeah, all mine. Awesome. Uh, I have a squad of uh, Guardian jet bikes with a Warlock. Okay. Um, don't don't notice the guys. He's not painted. He's the one guy in the, the air. One guy. He's not painted. Yeah. Uh, I have a Falcon. Okay. What's um, the Falcon armed with? The Falcon is armed with an Eldar missile launcher. Okay. No bright lance. Um, no bright lance. Just it does the have, it has the Eldar missile launcher and the standard uh, pulse laser. Pulse laser. Yeah. Okay. I have six fire dragons mounted in a wave serpent that has scatter lasers. Okay. A squad of dark reapers. Um, Eldrad Uthron. Okay. A Farseer. Uh, this is kind of this is kind of a fun conversion, by the way. You got the uh, Island of Blood uh, Mage, High Elf Mage, and we gave him a head swap. And it's like a couple of Guardian, Guardians. aerial things. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Back. And it makes really cool. Eldari. That's really cool. Right, so I have a Farseer who has. Um, Two psychic powers, I'm going to roll for those later. Uh, okay. Two squads of Dire Avengers, both with Bladestorm and Exarchs. Okay. A squad of Guardians uh, with a Warlock and uh, Shuriken Cannon. Okay. A small squad of Wraith Guard with a Warlock Spirit Seer. I like your Wraith Guard, by the way. Nice conversion made out of uh, Necron Immortals. Yep. And a squad of Warwalkers with Star Cannons and Scatter Lasers. Awesome. Very cool. Let's see what I've got going. So I was I've been kind of you know looking at the demon codex and haven't had an opportunity to really play a game with it And we just had this traded in um, This is a, cu uh, a Custom job that a client asked for us to do a couple of years. Well like about a year ago now, I think and we um, We did it for him and he liked it and loved it and he traded it back in because he wants to do something different and so we have uh, converted Slaanesh army here, so I've got two heralds. I'm gonna run the, the heralds of Slaanesh, and I'm running them with a couple of couple of um, greater rewards or something like that. I'll have to look and see what I got. I can't re quite remember. Then I've got four units: one, two, three, four of demonettes. 15, 15, 14, 14 in the units. I'm running these guys here as fiends, and I've got three units of four fiends, two demon princes of Slaanesh with uh, wings and armor and flight, uh, that's what I meant, flight anyway, same thing. Um, this this big lady here, who's awesome, custom, nice fun job on her, um, she is uh, our keeper of secrets, though um, she's not on the right base size technically, it's not a big, not terribly big deal. Um, and then I'm running one of the exalted chariots, um, you know, the one that gets you a whole bunch of D6 worth of impact hits. So, I'm gonna run that, it's 2,000 points. Really model heavy, demons have gone a different direction. It's kind of an interesting thing, so we'll see what happens. It's, this is a classic fight. Slaanesh demons against Eldar. So, Jeremy, go ahead and uh, let's roll off to see what, or let's roll to see what the scenario is gonna be. I'm gonna take a die here and roll for us. It's a four, and what deployment? A three. So we'll come back after we figure that out and go from there. We figured out that we're playing the scouring. That's the one that has the six different objectives. Um, Sean has gotten six of these objectives together and he has them marked out with a number on the bottom. So what we'll do is we'll we'll put them up and then we'll you know randomize and we'll just pull randomly. Uh, or we'll, we'll randomly pull three and and go ahead and, and place them. But we're going to roll for table side right now. We're playing hammer and anvil. So one person's going to deploy down there. Other person's going to deploy up here. And then we have 24 inches in between, of course. So here's the roll off. Jeremy got a five. I got a five as well. All right, so a re-roll. I got a six and Jeremy got a six. Okay, let's do that re-roll again. Uh, Jeremy got a four and I got a four. Okay, we're really not cheating here. You can see this happening. All right, there we go, five and a three. So Jeremy, which side do you want? Um, I would say this side. He's, he's gonna deploy over there. Okay, so now we're gonna take turns placing deployment, or placing objectives. We'll roll for uh, psychic powers, uh, warlord traits. I have several rewards and stuff that I have to roll for. We'll deploy and go from there. Deployed uh, objectives. This is again his side. Um, my army is gonna be running towards him. I don't have 
any shooting at all, really. So I just kind of placed mine around. I think I placed that guy, that guy, and that guy. He placed these three here. So we're going, all my guys are going to be going that direction at him. So we're rolling Warlord traits. So let's see your Warlord trait there. That is a four. On the strategic. On the strategic. While your Warlord is alive, you can re-roll reserve rolls, failed or successful. So that could be pretty useful. I'm going to roll on the demon table um, in the book, and it will be my it will be my seeker, um, my seeker of Slinny. She'll she'll roll. And I'm sorry here, getting the trying to find the book here. So here's the here's the table. I rolled a four on the table. That is immortal immortal commander. Okay, so friendly chaos demon units within 12 inches of him can re-roll failed demonic instability tests. That's really awesome, actually. I'm a total fan of that. So, now at the same time, while we're working on that, I need to roll for my gifts. My heralds have a lesser and a greater gift each. My exalted chick... No, on my exalted chariot, I gave, um, I gave the Allurus a lesser. I'm giving her the Ether Sword, which is an AP2 sword. I'm going to do the same thing with uh, with all of these demonettes here. They're all going to just get the, the let. Well, you know, let's let's roll for it. I mean, I'm playing against. I don't need an AP2. Yeah, I do. He's got some guys that I could want an AP2 weapon against. So I'm going to go ahead and take AP2 weapons just for fun. So all of these lesser ones that I brought on my demonettes on their Alluruses are going to have. Uh, just the the basic sword. It's called the ether, an ether sword or something like that. It's just a basic. Um, let's see what's it called here. We'll we'll get the actual thing. It's called an ether blade, and it's a AP two melee master crafted specialist weapon. So I won't get the extra attack from from double hand weapons if uh, if they do have double hand weapons, which I don't remember if they do or not. But I do get. An AP2 weapon. Then I have a greater gift on each of my demon princes, so I'll roll for those. Uh, so here's the first demon prince. This is the one that has the big wings, we'll say. And I got a one on that, which gives them plus one wound and it will not die special rule. Thumbs up, I'll keep that. And on the other, ch the other chick, dude, whatever, a two. The, this demon has a fill no pain four up special rule. Thumbs up on that. That's pretty, that's pretty good. So it's got a one. Put a G1 and a G2 on there just to no, remind us of that. My Keeper of Secrets has two greater ones, so we'll roll them one at a time. First one is a four, which is Hell, Hellfire Gates. It's an 18-inch 18 eight, uh, Strength 8 AP1 Assault 1 Lance. And sure, I'll keep it. And then the second one is a six. It's the demon has a three up armor save. That's great. I'll take those three up armor save. So G6 and G4. All right. And then I also have two heralds. They each have a lesser and a greater. We'll give them, and um, they also are taking the beguilement power loci. So the unit they're with has fun stuff going on with it. So we're going to take the we'll roll for the greater on the first one. That's a six. Great. She'll take her armor save. She likes that. And a four. Sure, well, why not? A lance is just fine. So those are all of my stuff. G6, G4. Um, okay, cool. What do you got going here for me, man, on your psychic powers? I have two psychic powers going to the Farseer. Eldrad's sticking with his codex powers. So he gets all of the Eldar powers. Yep, and the Farseer's going to roll on the divination table. Okay. Uh, so the first power... Is a one? For boating? Boating. Um, let's see... Yeah, that's full ballistic skill on Overwatch if, for whatever unit he's... Let's see, the power is, it's a blessing that targets Psyker. While the power is in effect, the Psyker and his unit have counterattack special rule and Overwatch at full ballistic skill rather than ballistic skill one. Note that this does not allow weapons that could not normally fire Overwatch to do so. That's really powerful. Now I'll go ahead and keep foreboding then. Okay, second and one. For my second one. Two, forewarning, gives him a four up end bone save for the unit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bypass that one and take the Primaris power of press, uh, Prescience. Prescience. Awesome. Sounds great. All right, so we are now ready to uh, roll. Um, we're gonna roll to see uh, Night Fight. Is it Night Fight turn one? On a one, it is not Night Fight turn one. And let's roll to see who goes, f who deploys first. I got a two and you got a one. I'm going to go first. I definitely need to. 
Um, I'm not putting anything in reserve, even though half my army could reserve. I'm just going to run right at him. So we'll see how that goes. Deploying and going from there. All right, we have deployed. So let me show you what I got going here. 14-man unit. Fiends. Demon Prince. Chariot. 15-man unit. The Red Skull marks my one of my uh, heralds. The Seeker. D uh, again, f uh, another unit of uh, fiends. Demon Prince. 14-man unit like this. 15-man unit with the other herald right there. Fiends at the end of the table. Everything on the table. Jeremy, what do you got going? Um, I've got my wave serpent with fire dragons. Okay. Uh, here on the side, the jet bikes with their warlock. Okay. Um, my farseer is joined up with this squad of nine avengers. Okay. Uh, the guardians are posted here, across the top of that um, mushroom. Mushroom. Yeah, mushroom. Uh, the other squad of Dire Avengers over here. Uh, Eldrads taking up the center. Okay. The squad of War Walkers, Falcon, and Wraith Guard uh, bring up the flank. Okay. And the Dark and Reapers. The Dark Reapers. Uh, and Eldrads join those other Dire Avengers. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, right before we roll to see the seize the initiative, where we get to see the values of these things. There is a two right there. This is a three. A two in the middle. A one right there. Four right there, making this guy a three right there. So all the points are on his side of the table. If you can manage to shoot me into the ground, it will be really painful. He's going to roll to seize the initiative right now, and I will cry if he does a little bit. He does not seize the initiative. Hallelujah! We'll move. All right, going to move and come back. All right, end of movement, turn one. I ran up here, or I moved up. I haven't run or anything, but you know, you got unit, 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 chariot, more fiends, another unit. Both demon princes went ahead and swooped, so they're really close by now. Um, let's go for some running. Everybody gets to run, and they're all Slanish demons, so they get a plus three to this run, and they're fleet, so they get to re-roll if I don't like the result. So we'll start with these chicks here. A six, obviously keeping right here. A three, we can think we can do better than that. A five, we accept. I can't run with that guy, these guys. A three, we think we can do better. We can do better with a six. The, I'm going to do all this right now rather than moving them separately, which was way, which is the way I would do it in a tournament. But I'm doing it separately here because it's faster for the, for the sake of filming. My leader, I'll keep the four. This unit is a two. I think I can do better than a two. Nope, still a two. Okay. The, uh, this big unit here, two, definitely re-rolling. For a one, that's terrible. Two units of fiends. So uh, green is going to be the closer unit of fiends to where the camera is. We'll re-roll that. Keep the six, obviously. Oh wow, one terrible. Okay, awesome. So those are all my run rolls, and then this guy gets to move up to twelve inches because it's a fast open top vehicle. So we'll go ahead and go from there. Okay, um, I just remembered right before I was about to turn over the camera, or turn over to turn two, that I'm supposed to roll for the Warp Storm. Um, this is what you do is your primary detachment is a demon. You roll this at the um, start of each of my shooting phases, and then I apply the result. So here's my Warp Storm roll. Oh god, no! It's a terrible roll! It's the worst roll that could happen to me! Why? Why? All right. All units with a demonic instability special rule, friend or foe, are immediately take a demon demonic instability test. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted to have happen. That's cool. That's the worst thing ever. Okay, by the way, this is where I would have run, but now everything's going to take a demonic instability because everything here has demonic instability. Um, double check and make sure my. I don't know if my chariot does. Uh, yep. Demonic instability is the exalted allurus only, so I think that doesn't. I don't. It does not affect my chariot. I'll double check on that. But anyway, uh, we'll start rolling. Leadership of these ch chicas is probably seven. Luckily, I got the keeper of secrets. Allows them, if I'm within 12 inches of them, I get to re-roll. 
So this is gonna hurt some. I'm gonna lose some. I'm gonna lose some chicks here. Um, leadership seven. And the way that demonic instability works, if you guys there there at home and you know not having read this book yet or anything, so I'm gonna roll and I take a leadership test. And if I roll under my leadership, everything's fine. If I roll over my leadership, the guys, I, I lose wounds. Um, for each point I fail it by, I take an additional wound and no saves of any kind are allowed. So we'll start with this unit right here. Leadership seven, a 10, I'm gonna choose to, well, if I can reroll it, I'm going to choose to reroll it. Let's see if I have the range to my, to my chick. I don't think I do. Um, was, I'm gonna. If I were, if I were retro, if I were had done this in the right order, she would have been back, you know, back here. These guys would have been back here further. I could have made that differently. So instead, I'm just gonna lose three models. That's terrible. What a terrible roll to hit. All right, checking for fiends. Checking their leadership. Fiends are leadership seven as well. So right there, they pass, no problem. Demon prince. Is rolling a 10, and I'm almost positive he's within 12 inches of of my uh, of my chica. She is, he is. I want to find out what his leadership is. He is. He might be eight. They, they may have changed it. Demon Prince is a nine, so I could take a wound or I could attempt to re-roll it. Hmm. Because I could roll a 12. Yeah. I could roll a 12 and then my guy would just yeah. die. And that would be I'm terrible. All <laughs> You're all for that. I'm going to re roll three. Well, I'm perfect. Fine. That. All right. So, right now we're going to assume because when this cherry is destroyed, we remove this. She doesn't get to she doesn't get to get out of it. So, I'm going to assume that we just count as a vehicle. So, you don't roll demonic instability for her. This unit. Fine on a four. Keeper. Fine on a nine. Keeper, yes, leadership nine. Okay, those fiends. Reroll. Thank goodness for that. That would have been death right there. Five. Yeah, that would have been terrible. That unit. They're fine. The one with my herald in there. Fine on a seven. Mother demon prince over there. Fine on a six. And finally, those guys in the corner there. Fine on a seven. So that cost me three guys. So it's pretty nasty. That this this thing is kind of random. It could have, it could do all kinds of things. It could have done something really cool for me. Um, that was that was bad. But I mean, it could have been worse. That could have been a lot worse. You know, and having having this power where I got to re-roll my demonic instability tests. That's a huge bonus, by the way. I mean, the only other power, the warlord trait that I could have I would have been more happy with at this moment right now would have been the one that allows me to re-roll my warp. My warp quake, warp, warp whatever it's called, test, um, which is a, roll, a result of a five. So anyway, um, getting back to the right order of things, this is how everything's moved after I after I ran. So here's how close I am. The um, because of, because they're demons of Slanish, they get to add three to three to their their roll and their fleet, so they get to re-roll the result. As you guys saw me re-rolling just a second ago. So. Um, it's pretty brutal. I had quite a few nine inch runs. Um, even the group that ran one inch still moved four inches. That's, I mean, that's really powerful, really fast. Um, yeah, he's gonna get one turn of just shooting me and then I'm just gonna come in at him and try and get him. Numb. All right, your turn, sir. Powers, your turn one. All right, we're gonna put uh, prescience on the Dire Avengers. Prescience on the Dire Avengers. Pass on a four. Pass on a four, okay. <clears throat> See, his own is foreboding. Yeah, you want that? Mm, yes, you do. I believe I will want that. Yeah, yes, you so will. Foreboding on the Dire Avengers. And that's. Pass. Um, yeah. On leadership the 10. Farseer? Yeah. yeah. Farseer's a leadership 10. Yeah, Farseer's leadership 10. Okay, next. Eldrad. Right. Eldrad. Uh, Fortune is the same as Prescience? No, uh, Guide. Guide, that's right. Guide on the Farseers. The Dire He's Avengers. The dire, Actually, yeah. Um, Guide on the Dire Avengers. He'll you pass on eight. Before you roll the seas, correct? You, <laughs> yes, it comes at, right after Infiltrators. Okay. Yeah. 
and we're playing a game over there. This is our usual league night. We're trying to get a league going here on weeknights here at BTP. Let's see. Well, one week, Wednesdays, Wednesdays. All right. So if you guys are local watching this video, you guys are always welcome to come down on a Wednesday. Wednesday night, we usually play about 2,000 points. Even if you don't have painted armies, come down and play. Right. Starting at six. He's gonna use his uh, Staff of Ultramar to cast the same psychic power twice and put Guide on the Wraith Guard as well. Wraith Guard have Guide. Yes, they do. Okay, and one power left. All right. There's one power left. Um, We'll go ahead and fortune his squad. Fortune his squad. Re rolls to Ruse rolls to save. All right, good on the six. All right. All right, so now movement. Okay. Okay, it's gonna move and we'll come back.